Oklahoma may be one of, if not the best football program in the modern era of football. At least, that's what their website claims. They have won seven national titles, 31 bowl games, 50 conference championships, and 14 Big 12 titles in school history. They have also sent 47 first-round picks and 395 players to the NFL Draft. Seven Heisman winners, 92 major national award winners, and 167 first-team All-Americans. They are a program that is known for winning games, but are coming off one of their worst seasons in almost 25 years after going 5-7 and seven in year one under Brent Venables, leaving some fans worried. Yet, I don't think it's time to hit the panic button. Come along as I go over the history of Oklahoma football and explain why I think Venables can take the Sooners back to the college football playoffs and take the program to the next level, especially when they join the SEC next year. You don't want to miss this one. Before we talk about Venables, let's go back and take a look at the history of Oklahoma football. The Sooners played their first game on December 14, 1895, which was actually 12 years before Oklahoma became a state. John A. Hartz organized the game and was a student at Winfield, Kansas. The Sooners would be shut out 34 to nothing by a more experienced team from Oklahoma City High School. The Sooners even failed to get a first down the whole game, and so many players got hurt on the Oklahoma side, they needed to borrow players from the other team to finish the game. My favorite part about making these videos is seeing these now dominant football programs play and lose to high school and YMCA teams back in the early days of their programs. In 1897, Vernon Lewis Parrington, a professor at the time, became the program's first head football coach. He had first played football at Harvard and brought his East Coast experience to Oklahoma, leading them to a 9-2-1 record in four years. Due to football interfering with his teaching responsibilities, he decided to step down as coach in 1900. Parrington would go on to win the Pulitzer Prize for history while at the University of Washington in 1928. Over the next few years, Oklahoma would have multiple coaches come and go while hovering around the 500 mark. They would play their first game against in-state rival Oklahoma A&M, a game that would be named the Bedlam Series in 1904 in Mineral Wells Park in Guthrie, Oklahoma. The Sooners won the game 75 to nothing. Benny Owen became Oklahoma's first long-term head coach in 1905. Owen played for Fielding H. Yost and was a quarterback who led the 1899 Kansas Jayhawks to an undefeated season. Owen also coached under Yost at both Michigan and Bethany College after his playing career was over. Due to budgetary problems, Owen would sometimes schedule three road games in a single short trip, usually exhausting his players, though his team still found a lot of success. After eight meetings with Texas, Oklahoma finally won their first matchup in the series against their arch rivals. In 1908, they finished 8-1-1 with their only loss coming to the Kansas Jayhawks, while in 1911, they went 8-0. They also had undefeated seasons in 1915 and 1918 as well. In 1920, Oklahoma moved to the Missouri Valley Intercollegiate Athletic Association, which would later become the Big Eight, after being a founding member of the Southwest Conference in 1915, which included Southwestern, Oklahoma State, Arkansas, Baylor, Rice, Texas, and Texas A&M. The MVIAA included Washington, Missouri, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Drake, Iowa State, Kansas State, and Grinnell, along with Oklahoma at the time. They finished their first year in the conference going 6-0-1, with their only tie coming against Kansas State. Owen retired in 1926, and over his 22-year coaching career at the helm of the Sooners program, they went 122-54-16, finishing with four undefeated seasons and three conference championships. He also became Oklahoma's athletic director. Owen would be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame during the inaugural year in 1951. Adrian Lindsay followed Owen as head coach, and although he led Oklahoma to a huge win over Nebraska 20-7, handing Nebraska their worst conference loss in almost two decades, he still went 19-19-6 and resigned from the position quietly after five years. After Louis Hardage went 11-12-4 as head coach, Lawrence Bliff Jones became head coach and impacted the athletic department's administration and finances in a significant way. Tom Stidham became head coach after Jones led the Sooners to a 10-1 record and a fourth place finish in the AP poll, leading to them playing in their first bowl game, the Orange Bowl, where they lost 17-0 to Tennessee. Stidham would be unable to find the same type of success the following three seasons, but left Oklahoma with a .750 winning percentage in his career. Throughout the early 40s, the Sooners never finished lower than second in the Big Six Conference and won two conference titles under Dewey, Snort, and Luster. Bear Bryant served as an assistant under head coach Jim Tatum, and during the 1946 season, 
Oklahoma went 8-3, winning Bedlam 73-12 and won the Gator Bowl over NC State. Bud Wilkinson, who almost was given the job over Tatum, replaced Tatum after the 46th season when he left for the Maryland job. The Wilkinson era at Oklahoma was one of the most successful and dominant periods in college football history. As head coach of the Sooners from 1947 to 1963, he led them to three national championships in 1950, 1955, and 1956, and 14 conference titles. He also oversaw the longest winning streak in NCAA history with 47 consecutive victories between 1953 and 1957. Wilkinson was known for his innovative use of the split T offense, his meticulous preparation, and his high standards for his players. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as a head coach in 1969. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest coaches of all time and a legend in Oklahoma football. Between 1964 and 67, Oklahoma fell off before a 10-1 season in 1967, led by Chuck Fairbanks, where they went on to win the Orange Bowl and finished third in the AP poll. He also coached Steve Owens, Oklahoma's second Heisman winner. He finished his time at Oklahoma going 52-15-1 before leaving to become the head coach of the New England Patriots. The Barry Switzer era at Oklahoma was another remarkable chapter in the Sooners football history. Switzer was the head coach of the Sooners from 1973 to 1988, and he led them to three national championships in 1974, 1975, and 1985, and 12 conference titles. He also coached some of the most talented players in college football, such as Billy Sims, Joe Washington, Brian Bosworth, and Keith Jackson. Switzer was known for his charismatic personality, his aggressive recruiting, and his prolific wishbone offense. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as a coach in 2001. He is one of the most successful and popular coaches in Oklahoma football history. The Barry Switzer era at Oklahoma ended in controversy when Oklahoma was put on probation. It was found Switzer was personally paying for players' rental cars for the students entertaining recruits on campus, along with multiple off-the-field issues by players. Their probation lasted three years, including a two-year bowl ban, a one-year television ban, and two years reduction in scholarships. Because of the amount of pressure to resign, Switzer decided to step down after the scandal. There was a gap of 10 years between the Barry Switzer and Bob Stoops era at Oklahoma. Switzer resigned as the Sooners head coach in 1989 after 16 seasons amid the series of scandals and the NCAA sanctions that tarnished his legacy. He was succeeded by Gary Gibbs, who coached Oklahoma from 1990 to 1994 but failed to win a conference title or finish in the top 10. Gibbs was replaced by Howard Schnellenberger, who lasted only one season in 1995, going 5-5-1 and alienating many players and the fans. John Blake took over in 1996, but he went 12-22 and in three seasons and was fired after the 1998 season. Bob Stoops was hired as the new head football coach in 1999 after serving as the defensive coordinator at Florida. He quickly restored the Sooners' winning tradition, leading them to the national championship in his second season in 2000. He also won 10 Big 12 titles and made four more appearances in the national championship game. He coached Oklahoma for 18 seasons until he announced his retirement in 2017. He is the winningest coach in Oklahoma history with a record of 190 and 48. He is widely respected and admired by Oklahoma fans and former players, including Switzer, who has praised Stoops for his loyalty and dedication to the program. The Lincoln Riley era at Oklahoma was a short but successful one. After a failed college football career, Riley became an assistant coach under Mike Leach at Texas Tech and would quickly become one of the top young offensive minds in college football. Riley was the head coach of the Sooners from 2017 to 2021 after serving as the offense coordinator under Bob Stoops from 2015 to 2016. He led Oklahoma to four consecutive Big 12 titles, three appearances in the college football playoffs, and also coached two Heisman Trophy winners in Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, and a finalist in Jalen Hurts. Riley was known for his innovative and explosive offense, which ranked among the best in the nation every year. He also improved Oklahoma's recruiting, landing several five-star prospects and transfers. He left Oklahoma after the 2021 regular season to become the head coach at USC, shocking many fans and players. He finished his Oklahoma career with a record of 55-10. The man chosen to replace Lincoln Riley, Brent Venables. The hiring of Venables at Oklahoma was the result of a swift and decisive search by the athletic director who was looking for a proven winner, a defensive mastermind, and a former Sooners assistant to replace Lincoln Riley. Riley shocked the college football world by leaving Oklahoma for USC after the 2021 regular season, ending his five-year tenure as the Sooners head coach. Oklahoma quickly turned their attention to Venables, who had spent 10 years as a defensive coordinator and associate head coach at Clemson, where he had helped the Tigers win three national championships and six ACC titles. 
Venables had also coached at Oklahoma from 1999 to 2011, serving as the co-defensive coordinator on the 2000 National Championship team and the defensive coordinator and associate head coach under Bob Stoops. Venables had a strong reputation as one of the best defensive minds and recruiters in the country, as well as a deep connection to Oklahoma's culture and tradition. The deal was finalized with Venables on Sunday, December 5th, just one week after Riley's departure. Venables was officially announced as Oklahoma's 23rd head coach that night, receiving a warm welcome from Stoops, who had served as the interim head coach for the Alamo Bowl. Venables said he was grateful for the opportunity to return to Oklahoma and lead the program into a new era, especially with the upcoming transition to the SEC. Year one of Venables did not go the way many fans thought it was going to go, as Oklahoma saw many players transfer out after the departure of Riley, so many expected this to be a rebuilding situation. What did not help was the 49-0 loss to Texas in Red River, the defense being a liability, and starting quarterback Dylan Gabriel getting injured. The Sooners posted a losing record and finished with a losing conference mark for the first time since 1998, the year before the Bob Stoops era began. Venables did not have the offensive powerhouse at his fingertips like Riley did when he became head coach in 2017. That offense included the names like Baker Mayfield, Joe Mixon, CeeDee Lamb, Marquise Hollywood Brown, and Mark Andrews. Brian Clinton from Heartland College Sports wrote back in November, Brent Venables is the right man for the job at Oklahoma and don't let experts like Colin Cowherd or Paul Feinbaum tell you otherwise. Venables is a proven winner and unmatched experience in the championship level games. It has a pedigree that is shaped by more than 20 years of coaching experience under three Hall of Fame mentors. It's going to take a couple of years for Oklahoma to get back to winning football games at the same level that it has been in recent memory. But I can tell you one thing, they definitely won't look the same doing it when it happens. Even after such a disappointing season, Oklahoma finished with the fourth best recruiting class in 2023, which was highlighted by 2022 National Gatorade Player of the Year and five-star quarterback Jackson Arnold. Things should quickly turn around in Norman going into the season. They did not lose any starters to the transfer portal and added a top 10 ranked transfer class. Gabriel returns at quarterback and could finish this year as one of the best quarterbacks in the Big 12 come season's end. The 2023 Sooners defense will have talent, returning experience, and better depth at the key positions of the defensive line and defensive backs this year than compared to last year. There's an argument to be made that Oklahoma can win anywhere from 8 to 11 games this season, making it a major jump from last year. Expected wins are against Arkansas State, SMU, Tulsa, Cincinnati, Iowa State, UCF, Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, BYU, and TCU, with their only loss expected to be against rival Texas. This projection is all based on FBI. I think Oklahoma should be fun to watch not just this year, but in years to come under Brent Venables, especially when they join the SEC next year. What do you think? How will Oklahoma do this year and down the road in the SEC? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.